Hey guys, in this video, I want to talk to you about the correlation between hypoxia and hair loss. Alright, so first and foremost, what is hypoxia? If you're not familiar with our YouTube channel, if you haven't seen our videos or heard of this condition, let's clear it up first so you know what we're talking about here in this video. So hypoxia in the simplest of terms means oxygen deprivation. It is specifically referring to a condition of low saturation of oxygen in the tissues in your body. So pertaining to this video, we're talking about scalp tissue that doesn't have enough oxygen. And this causes hypoxia. And hypoxia typically precedes inflammation and often fibrosis. So one of the underlying precursors to scalp fibrosis that's implicated in baldness is typically hypoxia. In fact, this has even been verified by studies like this one, where they point out that there is a relative microvascular insufficiency to regions of the scalp that lose hair in male pattern baldness. We have identified a previously unreported tissue hypoxia in bald scalp compared to hair bearing scalp. So in other words, what that study is pointing out is that in the scalps of balding men, wherever there is a loss of hair, wherever there is a bald region, there is a lack of oxygen. So at this point, perhaps you're thinking, well, if hypoxia is just a lack of oxygen, maybe all I need to do is breathe more deeply. I need to do some sort of breathing exercises, meditations, because you know I've heard I don't breathe deep enough and this is causing the stress and this is why my hair is falling out. Well, this is only partially true. That could definitely be beneficial because ultimately if you start hyperventilating, let's say from aerobic exercise or cardiovascular exercise and you can't breathe well, certainly then your cells are hyperventilating and that's gonna cause hypoxia. So this is one of the many reasons I always advocate against cardiovascular exercise, if you're somebody that's a cyclist and if you do marathons and you do intense long distance running or tons of aerobic or anaerobic exercise to avoid that stuff because it's putting a major stress on the body. However, there is more to the picture. So I would definitely recommend avoiding hyperventilation. I would definitely look at the way you're exercising. If you're somebody who's always doing cardiovascular exercise, if you're doing aerobic or anaerobic exercise and you're experiencing hair loss, it could be a major contributing factor. But expanding the physiological picture, there are other dominant factors. And if you're somebody who doesn't engage in cardiovascular exercise, you might still be experiencing hypoxia due to these factors we're about to touch on. So one of the first major causative factors to hypoxia is hypothyroidism. And we talk so much about the thyroid, but it's so crucial for good hair health and good overall health. And because of our stressful estrogenic world, so many people are dealing with a suboptimal thyroid. And the reason that low thyroid can lead to hypoxia is very simple. The thyroid gland is the key gland for regulating oxygen consumption and regulation in the body. So the thyroid gland is what drives oxidative metabolism or oxidative phosphorylation, which is a fancy term for glucose oxidation. And the byproduct of glucose metabolism is carbon dioxide. And carbon dioxide is not this waste substance we have been told it to be. It is actually a very protective substance. And one of the major things that carbon dioxide does is it detaches oxygen from the hemoglobin in the blood. So that way the oxygen is not bound up with the hemoglobin in your blood and instead can get to the tissue. So in other words, carbon dioxide helps to disperse oxygen to your tissues from your bloodstream. So now if you have a low thyroid, you're not gonna be producing enough carbon dioxide and this could result in hypoxia. Moving along, another major cause de factor for hypoxia other than the hypothyroid could actually be a copper deficiency, which is very common in today's world because copper is most abundant in things like shellfish. Not many people eat shellfish either due to an allergy or because of a dietary preference or they just don't like the taste. Not all shellfish taste that great, but shellfish is one of the most abundant sources of copper in fact, it's one of the only sources of dietary copper. The only other place you're gonna really find copper is maybe in chocolate or cacao. However, the copper in chocolate is not that bioavailable. It's typically bound up with phytates and lectins that make it unavailable for assimilation. So your best sources of copper are gonna be in shellfish, which a lot of people don't consume. Now, the basic reason that low levels of copper can cause hypoxia is because copper 
through a series of complex physiological and chemical mechanisms actually activates oxygen. So copper activates oxygen and makes it available for your cells and tissues to use, very similarly to what carbon dioxide does. And here are a few of the ways that copper specifically is responsible for the activation of oxygen and ultimately feeding the hair follicle and when copper is low, how it can contribute to hypoxia and hair loss. So first and foremost, copper is actually responsible for about 90% of the ATP produced in the electron transport chain, which is one of the processes, chemical processes that occur through oxidative phosphorylation, which is basically the oxidation of glucose ultimately into ATP. So copper is actually one of the substrates, the building blocks of an enzyme known as cytochrome C oxidase. And cytochrome C oxidase is responsible for the transport of electrons ultimately into oxygen. And perhaps the simplest way to look at this without getting into the complex chemistry is that without sufficient copper levels, then you're not going to be able to activate cytochrome C oxidase and then you're not going to be able to produce enough oxygen and ultimately not enough ATP or energy. So low copper levels means low energy levels. So as I've talked about in previous videos, cytochrome C oxidase is an enzyme that is actually activated by the sun as well. So copper activates this, but also when you're in the presence of the sun, the sun interacts with the mitochondria and it can stimulate cytochrome oxidase to basically turn on the mitochondria to produce more energy or ATP. So this is one of the complex reasons that the sun feels so energizing and why the sun can actually activate and promote healthy hair growth which is one of the things that we talk about so frequently in the Forever Healthy Hair course, that getting adequate sunlight is essential for good hair growth. It is one of the major regulators of healthy hair growth, and it largely is responsible for activating cytochrome oxidase and turning on the mitochondria to make ATP. And if you're familiar with our channel, then you know that the hair follicle has three basic nutrients, oxygen, glucose, and ATP. ATP is the basic energy that everything, every cell in your body uses, including the hair follicle. So copper is essential for the production of the 34 ATP produced under oxidative phosphorylation. And if this process doesn't occur, if there's deficient levels of copper, or let's say you're not getting enough sunlight too, that's a key factor as well. Copper and sunlight are very synergistic. So if you don't have enough copper or you're not getting enough sunlight, there's going to be low activity of cytochrome C oxidase, which means low oxygen levels, low ATP, and this is what causes oxidative stress or the reactive oxygen species to start to damage the hair follicle through a complex series of mechanisms, largely through the inability to get oxygen, which is going to cause oxidative stress, but also through the downregulation of antioxidants and free radical scavengers like superoxide dismutase. In fact, if we look at a research paper here on the roles of oxidative stress and androgenic alopecia, this study found that there's a superoxide dismutase dysfunction in the red blood cells of people with androgenic alopecia. In this whole process we're talking about here, the low levels of copper, the insufficient activity of cytochrome C oxidase, and the whole dysfunctioning of the electron transport chain is one of the major reasons that there's low levels of SOD. Now, if you haven't understood anything I've said so far, let's just take a quick look at this study to simplify things. This study basically indicates very clearly that the levels of copper in men and women who have androgenic alopecia are significantly lower than those who do not have it. And that's one of the major points I wanna get across in this video. Androgenic alopecia is not caused by androgens. That's just a misunderstanding of the science, a misinterpretation of what's actually going on. And even the male pattern baldness is not some gender specific mutation or unfortunate fate. Because you're a man, you're gonna go bald and you're inferior in this way or something. The fact of the matter is, research like this and the research that we share on these videos just further verifies that hair loss is a symptom, meaning that it's a sign that something's not working correct in your body. Now this isn't to invalidate you and say, if you're experiencing hair loss, something's wrong with you. You're a sick person. No, but what it's saying is that just like getting a cold, just like getting a skin rash or some sort of other health symptoms, that your body is trying to give you a sign and say, hey, something's off. Something's not working right. Let's figure this out. Now, unfortunately with hair loss, unlike other health imbalances or symptoms, we have been told less about what's actually going on, so therefore the problem persists and we don't solve it like we do acne and other issues. 
But this is actually the good news because the whole genetic theory, the whole androgenetic theory or androgenic theory actually just makes you a victim. It says, hey, this is just genetic. Poor you. There's nothing you can do about it. You just got to suffer. You were born genetically inferior. However, exposing the actual underlying pathology and physiology tells you, hey, there is something you can do about it. There's underlying issues going on. Maybe it's the way you're eating. Maybe it's your physiological stress load. Maybe it's your environment. But nevertheless, it's saying something's off in your biology, but there is something that you can do about it. There's something that can be done about it. So getting back to the takeaway of this video, the first thing that I want you to understand is what I just said, that there is something off in the body when you're experiencing hair loss. It's your body's response to a physiological imbalance. When the body's in homeostasis, the hair tends to get the adequate energy it needs to grow. So hair loss is more a sign that something's going off. There is biological chaos, stress, or imbalance. The other thing to understand is that one of those major imbalances might be hypoxia, meaning that your cells are not getting oxygen, or specifically the hair follicle and the scalp tissue is not getting oxygen. And that is a key sign that there's some sort of stress occurring. And as we talked about through more complex mechanisms, this could be due to hypothyroidism and the inability to produce carbon dioxide and deliver that oxygen to the cells, or it could be due to a copper deficiency or even a sunlight deficiency, which results in low ATP production, basically causing a dysfunction in something called the electron transport chain, which is an aspect of oxidative phosphorylation or the production of ATP or energy. So to summarize, if you're experiencing baldness, male pattern baldness, androgenic alopecia, or some sort of hair loss, it's possible that there's tissue oxygen deprivation or hypoxia, and a few simple things you're gonna want to take a look at or experiment with to start the corrective process would be first and foremost, take a look at your thyroid function. Get the thyroid into good shape so that way your cells can use oxygen. Number two, Perhaps you are copper deficient. And again, the best sources of copper are going to be shellfish. I recommend consuming shellfish at least once or twice a week. My favorite would be oysters, shrimp, and mussels. But of course, you're gonna to want to eat something that tastes good to you. But oysters are definitely gonna be one of the richest sources of copper, and they have zinc and other beneficial nutrients as well. The third thing I'm gonna recommend is get adequate sunlight, because sunlight is also an activator of cytochrome oxidase, that enzyme that turns on ATP production in the electron transport chain. So there you have it, three very simple things that you can start to do to correct hypoxia, one of the major underlying imbalances that tends to be implicated in all sorts of hair loss, proven in various clinical studies and very obvious to see as well. Now, if you're interested in learning more about how to correct hair loss from this sort of point of view, a more broad range, holistic, physiologically sound point of view, be sure to check out our Forever Healthy Hair course. We dive into this material in greater depth and it's also a very great place to get step-by-step -step information. Sometimes watching these videos can be a little bit difficult because if you haven't watched some of our previous videos, maybe we're talking about stuff that you haven't heard before. So although for us, these videos build on one another to a degree, they also might seem very sporadic to the viewer if you haven't followed us from the beginning. So if you want to see information like this in a very step-by-step -step fashion and get all the pieces to the puzzle put into one place, then definitely be sure to check out our Forever Healthy Hair course that you can find in the description box below. Otherwise, if you've enjoyed this video and found it helpful, be sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to our YouTube channel if you are new here, and if you're interested in learning more beyond this video, remember we do have an online wellness academy with the Forever Healthy Hair course. And we also have a blog and an online tonic herb shop, both which are full of free information and resources that you can find in the description box below.